In this video, we are going to take a deep dive on the second of Aristotle's ancient pillars of trust and influence. Pathos. First, we'll define what pathos actually is. Then we'll talk about how you can apply it to build trust rapidly in any communication challenge, whether it's a one-on-one -on -one conversation or speaking to a large audience. And finally, we'll talk about the dark side of pathos. In case you're new here, my name's Hayden Richards. I am an emergency physician and this is Comms Lab. In this channel, I share my journey and what I've learned as I strive to develop myself into an effective communicator and emotionally intelligent leader. A few months back, I had to do a presentation to my emergency colleagues on a research project that I'd been involved in. I knew that there was a pretty high potential for these things to be pretty dry. Honestly, I was worried that if I got this wrong, people might actually start falling asleep. It's not a good look. The research topic itself was to do with bad experiences that emergency doctors had had in their interactions with other doctors and how that can affect the the care of our, of our patients. So what I decided to do was to start the presentation with a story of a terrible interaction that I had had myself with, with another doctor and the significant impact that that had had on me for many days afterwards. Now, this was a bit challenging for me because being the person who presents on all things communication, I'm supposed to be the one who doesn't have these kinds of troubles. I was kind of worried that people would think less of me but I decided to take the risk anyway, partly because I wanted to try something new, but also partly because I thought it was an experience that my audience would be able to connect with at an emotional level. I remember feeling quite a lot of emotion as I, I recounted these events, but as I reached the end of my story and moved on to the more technical aspects of the research, the thing I remember is the rapt attention of the audience. And later on, as I walked away from that event, I reflected on three really valuable lessons that this experience had taught me. One, the importance of understanding your audience. Two, the immense power of storytelling. And three, the tremendous value of showing just a little bit of vulnerability. And the reason these elements were so important was that they allowed me to connect with the audience at an emotional level. This is pathos. Audiences of all sizes can be genuinely moved by this kind of rhetoric, especially when it taps into some primal emotion like fear or grief or hope. Connecting at the interpersonal level, I think it's a little different though. When I think about this kind of scenario, the master skill I think of is empathy. In fact, you might've noticed that the word empathy is actually derived from pathos. This still involves one, understanding the other person and two, potentially showing vulnerability, but probably less in the way of storytelling and more in the way of encouraging the other person to tell their story and then validating their experience. The interesting thing about empathy is that it engenders trust not by stirring up emotion, but by settling it down. If you're interested in taking a deep dive into a brain-based approach to de-escalation of intense emotions, you should definitely check out this video here. Okay, let's talk about the potential pitfalls of pathos. Pitfall number one, the principle of neutrality. Aristotle was very clear that all aspects of rhetoric were morally neutral. Essentially, this means that they can be used for good as well as evil. I mention it here because I think that probably pathos is potentially the most damaging of the three different rhetoric devices. Time after time, history has witnessed the danger of harnessing the power of emotion to motivate people in the absence of reason or based on false assumptions. Pitfall number two, forgetting the mission. You ever come out of a meeting like this? Hey, how was the meeting guys? Oh, it was, it was really great. Like I really, I really felt like I was heard. Like, like they really cared. Yeah. And, and like, I, I feel really motivated, like for the next step. Great. So what is the next step? Hmm. The risk with putting too much emphasis on emotion is that you can forget the facts. You can forget the mission, the task that you need to achieve. And when the task or the facts are forgotten, we run into the risk of people leaving a meeting or a speech or a conversation feeling very validated, very heard, and, 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 and just generally very good, but only to realize sometime later that no concrete steps have actually happened to fix the problem. Pitfall number three, getting overwhelmed. Sometimes when too much emotion comes into your communication, it can actually be overwhelming. I remember the first time I had to tell someone that they had cancer. 
And honestly, I actually felt so overwhelmed by emotion myself at that time. I'm kind of ashamed to say it, but the patient actually had to comfort me. This was, this was far from ideal. Um, given that that person was the one who really needed support with this, with this terrible news. The same goes for when you're talking in front of an audience. A little bit of emotion and vulnerability is really powerful, but a blubbering mess is it's just awkward. Pitfall number four, excessive or inappropriate self-disclosure. Storytelling can be powerful, but when it's used excessively or in the wrong context, Rather than connect, it can actually widen the gap between you and whoever it is you're communicating with. This can occur in the domain of public speaking just as easily as it can at the level of a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Now, for all of you Aristotelian Puritans out there who are thinking to yourselves, Hey, that's not pathos. You're right. But I guess by widening the definition of pathos to include the sense of emotional connection across any domain of communication, not just public speaking or persuasive, you know, uh, rhetoric, I've made the concept much more useful to myself. And I hope it's going to be useful to you as well. Even so, pathos clearly has some big downsides, particularly in the absence of a reasoned and, and rational approach. That's why I also made this video on Aristotle's third pillar, of rhetoric. Or if you want to see more of an overview of the three concepts and how I actually apply them in my, my life and my work, then you should check out this one here. This one or this one. Either way, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.